Hi everyone, Diane here. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm quite um, <clears throat> interested and pleased to be able to um, share with you a new shipment I've just had from Viviva of um, several of their products, which um, I know a lot of you have bought and they're very popular and I completely recommend them. The colours are brilliant, literally, uh, not just metaphorically speaking. Um, and so I want to explore these with you today. So let's get started on that. And then in a minute, I'll try out the, the sketchbooks as well, which I've also got. So this one here is the Viviva Colour Sheets, the original sketcher, sketcher set. Um, and in this sketcher set, you will find not only a set of the colour sheets, but also a water brush pen. Thing, which is very handy if you want to go outside and paint all you need to do is take with you a sketchbook like this one for example and this and this and you are really all set for anything that you might want to paint to be honest now these brushes I recently discovered um, when Viviva sent me one I hadn't come across them before but a lot of you already know about these. They have a nylon bristle or hair. Uh, uh, there's a word for this, but I can't remember what it is. Um, with a lovely point and they don't wear down very quickly because it's nylon, unlike some of the synthetic hairs or the even, even worse, sable, um, which loses its point very quickly. And you wonder what was the point in buying that? That was expensive. Anyway, so these are easy to use. You unscrew the barrel here and you can see it's got a big hole. The valve is in this part and this is open. And so what I normally do um, is you could use a plunger or whatever, but just put it in water, give it a squeeze to get the air out and it will be full in no time. I just have to squeeze it to get the air bubbles out. There we are, that's full. And then take a piece of paper towel or whatever have, you happen to have handy. Dry it off and screw it back together again. And then you've got a brush full of water, which you can use to paint with. And when you squeeze it, it's got sort of indentations here on the barrel. You hold it there and you can squeeze it and droplets of water will come out, you see? And you can use that to mix with or to extend the dilute the wash that you're doing and so on and so forth and you'll get the idea. Um, if I were to pick up an old one of these that I've already started, um, I'll show you. you, you just drop the water on there like that this is one way of doing it. And then you pick up the paint, can test it out on your palette. And Bob is your proverbial uncle. And then if you want to make it more dilute, you just squeeze and you can, you see, you can just make it more and more dilute. So there you are, you've got all sorts of different intensities of the colour there available for you to paint with. And um, I find them quite a creative tool to have, I must say. So that comes free with your first set of colour sheets when you buy the starter set, this one here. So that comes in this box here, the original sketcher set plus pen, brush, brush pen, water brush, water brush pen. Okay, right. Um, so that's that. And then they've also got um, this one, which is the autumn set, which is actually this one that I have here, the fall set. And in there, we've got 16 colors. They're slightly different from the ones in the original set. And they work like this. You've got um, two colors on each side of each flap, light green, bottle green, for example. And then you've got a piece of um, greaseproof paper between to stop them from touching each other. And when you wet it like that, you pick up the colour. You can see how immediate 
and intense that is. It makes a lovely green when you mix those two together, see? Isn't that amazing? You can just paint leaves like that. Not, not normally on ceramic, but you know, that's lovely, isn't it? Yep, there we go. We've got a flower, uh, um, a plant. I'm gonna put some more yellow up here. Anyway, so <laughs> uh, yeah, that doesn't look like blue. It looks like red, but it's not. It's this color. And ink blue, I mean, look at the intensity of that. They really are incredibly intense. Mix that with there and you're gonna get a brown. Always when you mix these complementary colors, purple and orange, you get a rather nice brown actually. See, lovely soft brown, which works really well for so many things. Um, so yeah, totally recommend those. So that's the autumn set. And they've also got, for those of you who don't particularly like that um, flappy thing with the sheets, the same paints are in these pans, which was a, a newer development, which they came up with after having started with the flappy things. Um, and we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have this, which is really lovely. This one is the, um, the spring set. So the colors are kind of a little bit more, um, you know, uh, see how intense that is right off the bat. That is pretty strong. And uh, lovely, lovely pastel colors for spring there. So I think we're probably gonna be working with this one quite a bit as the spring approaches, which it hasn't quite yet, has it? Um, so yes, there are 16 colors in here. Yes, and we have Crimson Lake, Alizarin Crimson, Opera Pink, Cocktail Pink, Permanent Yellow, Bees Yellow, uh, Cinnamon, Indian Red, Light Yellow Green, Olive Green, Permanent Green, Viridian Hue, Periwinkle, Cobalt Blue, Turquoise Blue, and Marine Blue. So a very nice selection of colors there. And if I were to sit down and um, swatch these for you on here, for you and for me as well. Crimson Lake. Alizarin Crimson, and you can see um, this one is a more, a warmer red and alizarin is a cooler red. Then we've got opera, which is pink, the famous opera pink. It doesn't look as light as that in the mass here. So that's always interesting, always interesting to swatch them so that you know what, what you've got. And that's um, cocktail pink. I'm not sure why it's called cocktail pink, but then that doesn't matter. This is permanent yellow. That looks more like an orange to me, so that's worth knowing. And then this one is bee yellow, and that is definitely yellow. Looks like cadmium yellow, that one does. And then here we have cinnamon. I have no idea why they're called. Cinnamon to me is brownish. This is sort of skin tone. That would be useful for people. This one is Indian red which is more like cinnamon to me. So as I say, it's always worth swatching these things so that you know what you've got. This is light yellow green. Sometimes they take a little bit of, you know, um, uh, agitation to get them started. But once they've been wetted and they sit there for a bit, they they will give up the color better. That's olive green, which is a fairly brownish kind of color. If you mixed that with permanent green though, you'd get what we consider to be more of an olive green, permanent green. <clears throat> and then this is Viridian, that's gonna be a bluish, more of a turquoise color. 
And then we have this one. And remember, this is the spring set, so that's why they've put in these pastel colours, I think, periwinkle there. It's more of a lilac colour, in my opinion. <coughs> I'm beginning to wonder if there's something wrong with my eyes. Cobalt blue, that looks like phthalo blue to me, but anyway, whatever. It doesn't matter what it's called. This is a kind of turquoise, and it's called turquoise. That's nice. That makes good soft greens when you mix turquoise with yellow of any sort. And then marine blue, which is similar. There we are then, so that's those colours. And um, I would recommend those, definitely, um, for going forward, what we're going to be doing this spring. The, uh, the super vivid and transparent colours, and they are, I don't know what they've used to make these colours. I think it must be some kind of a dye rather than pigments as such. You know, not ground up pigment like what Daniel Smith uses in a lot of their paints, um, but actually um, synthetic dyes. And yes, I should have mentioned the palette itself is made of cork. This is recycled um, corks from wine bottles or similar, they say. And um, it's quite nice. It's very light. It uh, hardly weighs any more, actually, than this. If I was to put those on the scales, I don't think I'd notice very much difference. So this is very light and nice to carry around with you. Uh, but so is this. Uh, excuse me, cats and dogs. Behave. Um, okay, and then there's another set here, which is a um, metallic version, which is new, relatively. New to me, definitely. There's a little swatch card. And it's the same idea, using the cork palette to hold the paints. And these ones, lovely gift for children, you know, these are. Um, little girls, I should think, and probably some boys would really like them. These are the metallic colours. Um, so this is the Viviva watercolour set on cork palette, 15 metallic colours. Now, I don't know if I'm going to swatch all of them, but let's have a quick look at one or two of them. This one's called Amethyst. People like me who tend to paint um, in a larger format might find these um, a bit different from what you're used to. Uh, you don't have to paint tiny things all the time. But, uh, you know, the access to the paint is fairly restricted. But for travelling or for outside and so on and so forth, or, you know, if you're in the car and you see a nice view and you think, oh, I'd like to capture that, instead of reaching for your phone, reach for your paints and your sketchbook. Which brings us to the next thing. So I'm not going to do that right now. I've got better things to do with my time. Um, sketchbooks. Uh, there are three here. Um, we've got their basic one, which I've used before. I've got oh, one, uh, ten of them that I've used over the last couple of years. And this is um, A5 size, so it's about eight by five or six, a six by eight is the size of it. And 64 pages, that is to say, if you count both sides, so there's 32 sheets in here. And it is hot pressed, so it's smooth. And it is acid free. And I don't think it's 100% cotton. Let's see what it says on the back. It's bound in a faux leather Binding. It opens flat, which is good, so you can paint across the hole too if you want to. Um, handmade with love. I know this is made by a small company in India, started by a couple of brothers while they were at medical school, and they decided that they, I don't know why, <laughs> they decided to start this business. I think they liked painting. And now they employ a whole um, group of Indian ladies in their village who make all of these paints, uh, so they tell us. and But the books, I don't think they make those. I think these are made in a factory somewhere. Anyway, um, so yes, I don't think this is 100% cotton, but it's quite nice paper and I like the format, don't you? Um, this horizontal format that you can 
you can paint right across. So you could do a nice big panorama there, or if you did it this way around, you can do a flower painting in this direction, which I did do before, which you've probably seen somewhere along the line. The only reason I don't do it more often is because it doesn't really fit on the camera very easily. Anyway, so that one's hot press. Then they have another one, same size, eight by six, uh, approximately. And this one is the, um, this is 100% cotton, this one. And this is cold pressed, so they say. There are 20 sheets in here, which makes 40 pages if you paint on both sides. And um, again, it's acid free and so on and so forth. Now the difference is, big difference actually, all three of these are very different from each other. This one is a creamy color, ivory you might say, light, almost white. A lot of paper is marketed as white when it's this, this shade. This one is different to totally, totally different. As you can see, the color is um, almost pinkish. It's, it's or orange, it's, it's totally, it's very um, almost sort of vintage looking because if you paint on top of this, you're going to get this color kind of glowing through the paint. So it'll have a, a tinge to it, a tinge of something. It's got a lot of texture. It's, um, can you see, it's, it's um, in, well, almost embossed. It looks like fabric. It looks as if someone's pressed fabric down onto it and uh, indented it. Anyway, so I don't know, I haven't used this before, but I'm gonna try it in a minute and we'll see how that one goes. This one I have tried and I know what that's like. So those two are totally different. So if you were to order both of them, you would have two, two totally different um, surfaces to paint on right there. Then there's this one, which is square. I think this one's about seven inches square. And it says here seven and a half by seven and a half, 40 pages or 20 sheets. So 40 possibilities if you paint on both sides and um, all, all the same thing, handmade with love. And we've got a different thing again. So when you open this one up, <clears throat> you can compare the color is not the same as that and definitely not the same as that. It's a colder uh, color than this. It's more bluish, really, grayish. This one's very yellow and pink. This one is ivory. This one, if anything, has a blue, a colder tone to it. Um, and it's got a texture which is somewhere between the two. It's not smooth but it's not as rough as that one. So I don't know what they call, what do they call that? Uh, cold press, they call it. Well, you know, cold press can vary as indeed this proves. It's very thick. This is um, 140 pounds, it says, as opposed to the smooth one, which is 120 pounds. It's perfectly thick enough. And this one, the, the, the yellow one, that one is a hundred and forty pounds. So those two are hundred and forty, that one a hundred and twenty. So there we are, you've got three options there and um, we'll have to try out some of these, won't we? So let's see, what shall we do? I suppose we could paint some birds or something like that, couldn't we? Um, yes, I wonder whether this is exactly the same as the old ones that I had. It definitely feels the same. Yeah, I'm sure that is the same. So rather than starting on that one, I should continue. This is definitely the same as this. So when you come in with your water brush and your paints, so let's, uh, what should we start with? Let's pick up some yellow. 
and paint some some nice yellow flowers. We can give them a nice orange center and then some lovely green leaves. I've mixed orange with um, peacock blue there. And if you don't mix it too carefully, um, you can get a kind of, uh, what would you call that? A, um, a, a two-tone two effect. And now I've added some purple to that green. And that softens it down a little bit. So then I think I will pick up some orange and do a nice orange flower here with a little bit of a stem. And maybe we'll do a brownish one here. I do find that this, um, this paper is quite absorbent. and tends to make you paint very spontaneously. That one needs some white on it when that's dry. I'll put some white on there. So there we are, you can see very, very quick, spontaneous possibilities for painting flowers or whatever you want to paint. Nice bright colours. That is uh, opera rose, isn't it? I'm doing this out of my, uh, I wouldn't say imagination, but memory of what flowers look like. Okay. So that's that, that's that paper. And then it'd be interesting to see if we try to do something similar on this paper, which I haven't used before. So I'm going to, I'm not going to change anything. Just fold that back. Can you see everything? Okay, yes, I think you can. Uh, right, so let's do more or less the same thing. Let's pick up some yellow. And you can see that that doesn't go on as smoothly at all, does it? because it's so, um, textured. You can see, I'm not um, trying to make that go dry brush or anything, but it's just, it's a different painting experience, definitely. I used to do a lot of painting on rough texture like this. You can, you can get rough uh, watercolor paper anywhere. You know, it's not, it's not unique to Viviva by any means. But you might find you need more water to make it work, like you know. And then I'm just going to try and do more or less the same thing as I did before. And um, let's find a nice olive green. It is different, isn't it? And then we had the opera pink. And then we had some leaves down here. And then maybe a bit of red. Okay. 
So there we are. Completely different effect. They're exactly the same colours painted onto two different kinds of paper. And then we have the other one, which is even more textured. This one here. Oh no, no, wait a minute. No, the, the, the one I just did was the most textured. This one is perhaps slightly less. So we'll do the same thing again. And let's see how this one goes. I think I need to get some more uh, green. So which one? I'm going to refer to my shade card here. Viridian is that one there. So let's pick up some Viridian and put that over here and then mix a bit of orange into that to give us a nice bright green. That's Viridian and orange. Whereas this is just Viridian, this here. So we add orange to get darker, slightly more natural looking green. Okay, and then if we add purple to it, which we've got purple here. Oh no, that's not purple, sorry. Um, which one's purple? Purple, oh, there isn't a purple. Oh, periwinkle, no. There isn't a purple on there. I would have to go to a different set to find the purple. Have to go here. Uh, yeah, that was ink blue, I think. Yeah, that's right. What was I doing? Ink blue and and green. Fantastic colour, look at that. Again, we're getting that dry brush look where you've got um, the colour is broken because I'm using relatively small amount of water. A bit more water here and it's a bit more diluted. So, and then I think I'm going to put another yellow flower here. That's what happens when you don't wash your brush out in between. Doesn't matter. Bit of orange in the middle. And maybe down here, like I did before, a greyish one here. This is just, just to practice the colours. And I'm quite liking this paper. I must admit, it's quite fun. More interesting, perhaps, than the others. I'm going to dab a bit of this yellow out, because I think that went on a bit intense. And when you, when you use new paper, you'll find, you know, it'll behave differently. And this is not absorbing a lot. Surprisingly, I, I'm not finding that this is absorbing the water a lot at all. Let's put a bit more yellow on there. And that'll do. I think you can see that there's a very big difference between the three. They look different, they are different. Of those three, I think um, this one here, the square one, is going to be my my prefer <coughs> preferred surface. So I think I might go ahead and do some spring paintings in this book 
using the spring palette that we've just been experimenting with. And um, yeah, I think we'll have a lot of fun with that this spring. So just go along to vivivacolors.com and you'll find all of their products there. And if you use our um, discount code Diane10, you'll get 10% off of your order. And they're pretty good at shipping. They have um, shipment places all around the world. So it doesn't matter if you're in America or England or in Europe or wherever, they will get them to you fairly quickly. Nothing to worry about there. So uh, yeah, I'll let you go now. Uh, don't forget to check out our website, dianeanton.com. Visit us on Facebook, join Patreon and um, have a lot of fun with your painting, everybody. So I'll see you again soon. Probably, oh, I would think in a day or two. So bye for now, everyone. Happy painting. Bye bye. <laughs>